everyone. Hello everyone, this is Alex Malou for IABC Amina. Um, I am your host today and this is a pre-recorded webinar. Uh, we are joined by two very special speakers. Uh, Via, she is uh, our board member um, based in Lithuania um, and she is joined uh, by her colleague Raminta. Uh, both of you, I'm not brave enough to try and pronounce your surnames because I know I always get it wrong. Um, but both of the ladies will be talking to us about PR in Lithuania, and they're going to be describing uh, what is going on in terms of communications in the country and essentially what it means for us as communicators in Amina and what we want to do, not just in Lithuania, but also in the surrounding region because essentially of the importance of Lithuania as a crossroads between East, West, and the Nordics. So, ladies, over to you. Thank you, Alex. And uh, hello, everyone. Very nice to be presenting to you about our lovely country. And I'm really glad that I'm joined by Raminta. So here's like a little intro about ourselves, how you can find us and how you can follow us, and we can connect anytime. And uh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm myself uh, been living in different places, including UK, including Belgium, Brussels, and Holland, the Netherlands. And still, I find Lithuania the most fascinating country in the world, and I hope you will too. And uh, Raminta, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit, because you know me a little bit more and <laughs> yourself a little bit less. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Let me pronounce my all surnames, okay? Uh, nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So uh, I'm, I'm very glad that I will have possibility to talk about two of my favorite things uh, at the same time. It's about my country and about communication and PR. So uh, I'm working now as advisor for the Minister of Finance in Lithuania. Uh, also, I'm uh, independent um, communication consultant. I'm a writer. I wrote uh, one book and a uh, second one is on the way. And I have a uh, big experience in journalism and television. So I'm in communication in PR for how many? More than 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I am the person, I'm, b I'm basically really admiring Raminta for what she has done and her experience. And uh, that's, I told her once that I want to be her when I grow up. Oh, <laughs> I'm not so old. <laughs> My experience is a little bit smaller in communications than I work in um, internal communications mostly. And my recent position was the head of comms of Telia, the largest telco in Lithuania and the Nordics. And our aim today is not talk about our works, of course. Our aim today is to talk about Lithuania, but just before that, I want to do a quick promo about saving the date for Imina Leadership Institute. So, so all IABC members know what uh, Imina Leadership Institute is. If you don't know, then uh, it's one of the benefits that IABC members get to participate in this conference. And this year, it's going to be hosted in Vilnius, in our lovely capital. Uh, you can see the hot air balloons in the picture, and you can actually fly the hot air balloon above Vilnius if you really want to. So that can be arranged. And next to it, it will be amazing agenda of uh, Imina Leadership Institute. So that would be, uh, we're going to have an open speakers event with IABC and local speakers as well as we will deep dive into our regional reality and do some planning and do some insights. And we will want to hear as many members as possible about how we should take IEBC MENA forward. So I'm really looking forward to seeing you over there. Okay. And we will send more info and more info will be all over the place pretty, pretty soon. So hopefully to see you in Vilnius live. And uh, just to find out what about Lithuania, here are some basic facts. So in the country, we have almost 3 million people living, and we have another million somewhere abroad. And the community is quite interconnected. Uh, we are, uh, since it's uh, probably one of the reasons why it's, why it's so easy to connect to Lithuanians, because it's not a whole lot of them. Uh, we are in the Northern Europe. We are 16 globally at the ease of, uh, of doing business, 
and we have very pretty strong credit rating. And I apologize for the little daughter; she's making a noise for you. It's, it's another speaker. So <laughs> it's she, another she will speaker. talk later, a few years yeah. later. Um, another thing is that uh, what which not many people know is that we are in geographic center of Europe. So if we take all the geographic, including including Greenland, including all the borders then we are in the geographic center of Europe, which makes us the crossroads between the Nordics and uh, East and West. Um, here are the facts. I'm not going to go through them in detail, but uh, that's something like an overview about the country itself. And when we move out, move on to the Lithuania facts for communicators. Can I add some facts about the country? Please do. Uh, not Please numbers. Do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are always told that we are living in the crossroad of different cultures, and they are very good conditions to to have very talented people. So we are, have talented people pool. We are talking on a few languages with high education. We are creative, and what else? Yeah. Um, yeah. So everything. So everything. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and you will see this. Yeah. And. Uh, I also remember when you, you were going through those numbers, one story, when I've been in, um, in Austria, I guess, and we, we were in, in, in some meeting right. with the right. tech association, and guys were talking, we're presenting them country and then uh, capital, Vienna, and there were some strange facts, for example, like uh, you can drink uh, water from the tap, or it, it will take 40 minutes to go to the airport, and then I came back to, to my country and said, uh, sometimes we even do not think how incre how how nice things we have and, and do not tell because they are, look obvious for us. Mm -hmm. So we also can drink. You also can drink uh, <laughs> water from the tap. And from Vilnius to airport, it took 20 minutes. And those talent people also. Yeah. And uh, speaking about the talent and the communications, which matters a lot for communications, is the language. Uh, we um, Lithuanians on average speak three languages, and I guess we can tell the same for the Nordics and Baltics because because um, we do learn English in schools, we do learn Russian, and there are some other languages that people choose to learn. Same as in the Nordics, for example, the um, TV is on in the original language, while subtitles are in Swedish or Norwegian, and so on. So this is how they learn the language. So. Uh, on average, three languages is something that is very typical for any Lithuanian. At the same time, we are very obsessed about our own Lithuanian language, which is one of the oldest languages in the world. And all communications, if you want to reach Lithuanian audience, same for Estonian, Latvian, you have to actually use Lithuanian, Estonian, Latvian. Also, for some, for example, for Estonian or Latvia, you might need a specific Lit uh, Russian language communications, because there is a big, popu big population part which are speaking Russian as well. Um, Lithuania has a Lithuanian language commission, which also is concerned about preserving the language. So, for example, what I noticed living in London is that the English that I learned in, the, in school is different from the English that people are speaking and writing now in, in the UK. While Lithuanian language is quite staying the same because we have the commi we commission as well thinks of some particular words to use once in a while. Sometimes they work, sometimes they're not. But I haven't heard about any country which have their own commission for the language. Sometimes uh, we are not very happy about that, but, <laughs> but it's okay. Our language is <laughs> yes. Uh, as I mentioned, we're quite interconnected internationally. Uh, this year we're celebrating 100 years of independence together with Estonia and Latvia from the Soviet, uh, not from the Soviet, uh, from the Russia, and uh, it's after the World War One, and um, uh, we have two Independence Day, which is a side fact, uh, and we are ahead with some of the technologies, uh, just because we didn't have those technologies while in Soviet Union. As an example, I can say uh, banks. They never used checks because I know that checks were used pretty commonly in the UK for a long time and maybe they are still used now, but we just never had it. We never had this technology. We immediately had the banking and we already moved on to, for example, e making e-banking solutions. So some of the things were just skipped for the reason to, to get the technology that is the most commonly 
commonly commonly used at the moment when we got independent. So from the Soviet Union, we got independent in 1991. So that's that's pretty much the year which cuts it. And this leads me to another fact, which also is useful for communicators, because 99% of Lithuania has internet coverage. And it used to be one of the first countries uh, in the world with having the fastest internet. And when it comes to mass media, what does it mean? It means that everything going very fast around. It means that uh, um, internet media is killing printed media. It means that you very you must be very fast, very short, and very concrete if you want to pass your message. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else it means? It makes Lithuanians very impatient when we travel abroad and the yeah. internet is a little bit slow. I know it, so I'm <laughs> traveling a lot, so I can't compare. And even if the difference is that you seconds, I feel yeah. it. At so the same, Wi Fi in Lithuania is the fastest one. In the world. Yeah, at the same time, what it, when it comes to communications, the websites have to really be fast in uh, getting, you know, in loading. Because if if we if there is a spotting of some latency, then it becomes a problem. And then again, it's because the, due to infrastructure, that's the infrastructure that we got into independence and it's, we invested a lot into the into the telcos. Um, another interesting fact that big part of Lithuanians' large companies like banks, telcos, retail chains, as we really shown, um, probably Sweden saw lots of investment potential in, in Lithuania very early ago, and I think it counts for for many countries. And we work with Scandinavia a lot, so that's one of the main partners for for any any activities in business. And one interesting fact about uh, Lithuania is that you might be using one global media channel which started off in Lithuania and it's, and it's Lithuanian based. Uh, it's not a very serious media channel, but it's a very fun one. And I don't know if you heard about Borg Panda be before, but Borg Panda is born and raised in Lithuania, so to say. Moving on, uh, we were discussing with Raminta what is small and what is big. So Lithuania is maybe in its size twice bigger than Belgium in the area. In population it is pretty smaller. And uh, and uh, yeah, is it is it a problem? What do you think? Um, yeah, I have possibility to travel a lot and to present my country and to hear how Michael is presenting my country. And to be frank, I, I hate to hear, like, apologize. We are a small country, but we do not have this or, or do not have that. And in, in, in this situation, I, I remember my uh, story. My colleague uh, came back from vacation from Indonesia, and she she was uh, telling us, it's about size, uh, uh, she was telling how she wanted to rent a boat, and we're discussing about the price. And she said, we are from small country, maybe the price could be smaller. And the guy, the Indonesian guy said, from small country? Uh, you mean small country Singapore when we are talking about sizes, so it, that means rich country. So I always say that yeah. being small means competitive advantage. You can do something faster, you can read someone faster, and yeah, and uh, you can be seen, it doesn't matter, size doesn't matter. I absolutely agree, because in small countries you can do a lot of things uh, quickly, implement them in the whole country, same as connection infrastructure, all the different things that you can do. Um, I did think of one disadvantage though. Uh, and I hear some background noise on Alex's side, she can go and mute. 500 megabytes. Okay, so uh, one of the things that is maybe a little disadvantage is that some of the global trends either come later to Lithuania or they don't come at all. So, for example, I was uh, told a story by Tele2, our competitor, when they based their um, one advertising campaign on the insight of a global trend which in the end never came. It was Japanese games, Kendamas. I was in the event listening to her story, and it was amazing how they built all their own campaign on these Kendama, how to say, games, 
But in the end, this trend never came to Lithuania. It never became bigger than, than you know, tens of people. So, so this is something that to be aware of, because maybe sometimes global trend or something that a theme that you see in the global media may not be covered in Lithuania or may not be covered with, in Lithuania with such a big strength. Um, of course, it doesn't count to Trump, Brexit, and all the other topics that are common and global. We do, we do, uh, we do uh, talk about these things a lot. And they are always saying that we are the biggest in the Baltics. <laughs> and I am not going to tell the story from Texas when we're presenting with Lithuania for some big guys, investors, <laughs> and they, they have maps like this in front of them, and someone took glasses <laughs> to find where Lithuania is. Yeah, so for you not to, not to have this, we entered the map to, to, to have a vision on where the Lithuania is. So, speaking about the media landscape, and Raminta, do you mind talking about the media landscape? Mm, because Navada said when people to started to talk. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we are left me. So, uh, as I said, uh, everything is changing very fast. And because of this, um, uh, on, online media killed paper. So, some social uh, networks killing online media. Television is still on, but it's uh, for some segmentation for some audience which is older because younger people are going on YouTube on internet and can see news, films and other information there. Uh, actually talking about media we have one national channel which is quite popular and it has its uh, on, online media channel radio and big audience. We have a few commercial channels it's more for leisure time, it's more for films, for, for some um, other, other things. And, uh, and uh, we have printed paper media when we are talking about magazines. Uh, you, you want to talk about this? Yeah, we discussed that uh, with Raminta as well before this webinar, that uh, definitely as in the same world and as in the rest of the world, uh, digital yeah. takes over printed. And printed becomes more less like media channel and more like leisure channel. So we get much more leisure related mag magazines, but the papers are actually shutting down, and we don't have many. So when it comes to this, if we have a few, we have maybe two main portals online, just a few magazines, uh, just a few news newspapers, which means that you can cover the whole audience very quickly. I mean, you just work with those ma uh, with those with those media channels. You build relationships with them, and and it works. And if for you example, are, if you are coming with interesting matters, yeah, so absolutely, very important. I think what is different from bigger markets is that, uh, for example, in the UK, you have to specialize a lot because there's so many different audience segmentations and different different media channels that you actually don't have to work with all of them. You just work with the ones which work the best for your message. So, so I guess that's the main difference of it. Uh, here you just go to the main channels and they reach, for example, television reaches regions, digital reaches uh, most of the city populations and uh, like Vilnius Konas, uh, the, the biggest cities in Lithuania, and, and that's, that's what it works. What is also interesting is because due to our neighboring with, with, with the East, um, Lithuania imposed fines and rebroadcasting re bans for some Lithuanian television, uh, for some Russian television, I'm sorry. Uh, this legislation was adopted in 2015 and it is considered a war propaganda. So there is a particular process how it's assessed, whether it's propaganda or not, and some of the channels have been banned already due to, due to this, uh, this legislation. And that's a different topic about the, you know, uh, war propaganda or Russian propaganda, how we call it. I guess it could be another webinar about that, but that's something that is definitely 
on top of our minds, especially when there is a, in Belarus, there is a, for example, Russian uh, army practice and stuff like that, that definitely covered in our media. And it's very important for us. And this is something that I don't see much in the Western media as well. So, so again, differences in topics. Basically, we cover all the topics, but, uh, but the topics are different, of course. Yeah, and our media is really free. Well, yeah. self-regulated and other regulations is working well. <laughs> yes. Um, you may ask any questions to us. We may respond to them as well. Um, probably not live in this webinar, but, uh, but, but later on I'm happy to respond. So if you have any questions from what we are presenting, we are happy to, to, to answer. Now, talking about digital social because it's upcoming. I did a little research about who is using our digital, and it's mostly dominating users are up to 35 years old, it's 75%. And then we have top social networking sites, and the top, 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 which is used by, I don't know, 80% of, uh, of, all, of the, all of the users is Facebook. Then YouTube is the second biggest, which is used by 70%. And then uh, others, which are way further, which are by, used by way less percentage, is Instagram and LinkedIn. Uh, and LinkedIn is mostly for the professional, for the employer branding things. Instagram is more inspirational for the little local brands that you create in the Baltics. And uh, it's very very exciting as well. YouTube is already becoming so big that it becomes as a TV channel itself. We have some TV channels which are existing only on YouTube, alternative channels. And Facebook is the media of all medias. Because for example, if you take Twitter users in Lithuania, you won't find many. You will find only the institutions and people who work with uh, internationally, like myself, like Raminta, uh, five, you know, institutions of Lithuania, they do have Twitter pages, but it's not really a big flow of information there. And maybe it's a bit of a chicken and an egg question, you know, you don't have much information, media channels don't use it a lot, so people don't use it either because this is not where they find the content. What happened for us with Twitter, I guess people adopted Facebook for Twitter functionality, when they just make their Facebook profile public, and they can post however they want, as many mm -hmm. symbols as they, as they need to, as many characters as they, as they want to. They post a picture, and this is how Twitter is kind of a secondary, secondary tool for them. So if you go to, to our region and you use Twitter, better use your budget somewhere else. Yeah, maybe it's related with our culture. You know, when I was thinking about Facebook, Twitter, and those channels, which is the most uh, interesting for us. We, we like to talk a lot. <laughs> we like to use um, rich language, oh, yes. pictures, and, and text. <laughs> so maybe Facebook is the most suitable for me. Yeah, absolutely. So just to summarize and to maybe fill in with some of the PR regards from Lithuania, we were discussing when we were preparing for this. We we're talking a lot about the country itself, how we obviously we are big fans of our country, so as you can tell. But are we really are we really different to other countries? And my little one is saying that we absolutely are. But actually let's let's discover, let's see whether it is or not. Yeah, first of all we were talking how strong we are in international communication to come here. So it's always changing. So we, we, we found 10 regards from our hearts uh, and 10 points about PR and communication, which uh, maybe could be discussed later. How it is in your country? How do you see? Do you agree or disagree? Absolutely. So we started from the um, PR history, maybe, that it's not. It's PR communication, how do you call? We actually have a few names in Lithuania for that, and we do not agree on one. Uh, it's quite young in our country. I remember myself when I was studying journalism in university, we, we didn't have uh, any courses for PR or for communication. And only uh, five or six years later, I wrote my master thesis on strategic communication, international, of course. But uh, uh, actually, 
what does it show and, and, and what does it mean saying that if you are not professional in PR, find and hire him, the best one. Because uh, everyone, especially in business or in, in politics, yes, as well, they, they think that they are the best uh, leaders. If they are the best leaders, they are the best communicators as well. And trying to, to do this. So sometimes you have to prove that communication is something very different and needs professional. So if you are going to start your business in Lithuania or do something here with communication, my advice is to, to find local professional yeah, and the best one. Again, what is also related with the short history is that, uh, first of all, it was uh, no communication, no PR, and the second one, PR can do everything, can fix everything, and can change everything. So our second regard is uh, that PR is not an answer to all your problems, but it can solve your future problems. So as you all already know, Good preparation can save your time, your money, your nervous, and, and, and have great publicity if you are preparing for that. But when is the time to, just to, to solve some problems, then you need twice a bigger budget to better prepare. Said one, we are come back. Never lie, it, it came from my journalist time, and i absolutely sure that audience Never forget you lie. So if you can do not lie, you can do it. Uh, you can do it. So PR can help to find uh, various answers for not not um, sexy questions. So, but do not lie. Yeah, very shortly. I'm very very strict on this. And I guess it's it counts for all the media that you don't. I mean, and it's and it's a typical ethics worldwide, I guess. Yeah, and uh, yeah, for all the countries, yeah. Yeah, and for us, since we are, mm, let's say, our media landscape, as Raminta mentioned, is pretty young. It's still um, something that is very important, and and uh, being honest is very important because before that. Uh, we, I mean, there is a history of paid media, of all these kind of things, but there is quite a strict marking about whether the article that you order is something that is ordered by the marketing department or is it the PR, like one of the PR messages that you have sent in your press release. And that is something that went through a journalistic filter. Yeah, and your audience is smart enough to see differences between paid articles because Absolutely. between marketing and PR and communication. And other yeah, one of the things that we do not have is we do not have, a, like, a, we cannot tell that certain media channels are supporting one or the other political stream like it is in the United States. So that's something that is, our all media is all media about everything. So And against politicians. Yeah. Yeah. I know it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, number four, uh, be brave and creative. You will not be noticed if you're too polite, too correct, too usual. Do you have a story about this? You're asking me about Litechnia story? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think that it works everywhere. Again, we are not, uh, we, we didn't discover something very special for Lithuania and very new, but uh, to be brave and creative, it helps uh, everywhere. And I remember, um, Sorry, from my my job, we are now working on 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 something talking about fin finance ministry. One of uh, field uh, communication, my field is to communicate to communicate about uh, the best jurisdiction for fintech or for high tech companies in Lithuania. So what uh, it's already made and how to attract investment, how to attract uh, how to attract uh, world attention, and to say yeah. Look, we uh, we have the best conditions. Come here and do your business, and and it would create uh, well paid jobs for our people. So when we started to work up on this, and when we we my minister and I prepared to say first time that we are going to be in a cup in Lithuania, we create some uh, new words. It's, it's called Litechnia. And we do not have any budget for communication for that. But we communicated Litechnia everywhere in our in conferences and meetings abroad when we were talking about fintech and high tech, high tech uh, things. So, uh, yeah, so I will make my, my story shorter and say that 
One year ago, we stayed first time in Paris, in Fintech Revolution, big conference. It, it sounds very brave from our side. And a few months ago in, uh, in China, my minister said, some speech on, on the conference and from moderator he got question. We had that your country have second name oh. Latvia. What does it mean? So yeah, it was my hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, I just want to encourage everyone to be brave enough to 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 work on that very hard if you believe that it works and it can bring some wellness for you, for your business, for your country, for your people. And just to add a little bit of a context. Lithuania uh, and the name, how to name Lithuania is a big topic for us. It's been discussed widely. So actually Raminta is again using the wave is already moving and, and using this topic because uh, honestly Lithuania as a name, we are not fully happy with it, I'm oddly happy. enough. Okay. Lithuania okay. is, is better. Lithuania is better. It's about our competitors. Yeah. Advantage. Yeah. And or small and very talented people country. Yeah. And I'll tell you why we don't like Lithuania so much. I like it too, but in general why, you know, it's some people are discussing changing it is because it's very often mixed with Latvia. So yeah, in very, like this. Even, yeah. even in Eurovision, uh, when they say Letoni or Lituani, it doesn't really make much difference. And sometimes we can get uh, wrong points. And another fact of interest, Eurovision is also a big topic in Lithuania. Everybody watches it. Uh, I don't know these people, but they do. And uh, then another thing is that, um, yeah, it's quite difficult to pronounce. We sometimes say that, you know, maybe we should just use our Lithuanian Lietuva name for all the international matters because it's different and it's, it, it, it is a little bit easier to pronounce. It's again about the communication, yeah. about strategic communication. I personally, we should work on this. Yeah, <laughs> I personally, when I, when I travel, when I come from Lithuania, I do get questions, Ukraina? Romania and all the different questions that I get just because it's so such a such a difficult thing to understand. It's good country, but our Lithuania <laughs> is the best one. So yeah. talking about our regards from Lithuania, we were discussing about audience and everywhere when you are starting to prepare some communication PR plan, you are talking uh, and thinking about the audience. So. Uh, uh, I always use uh, the story that uh, you have one mouth and two ears to to listen first and then talk. So um, doing PR or preparing some um, uh, strategy, first of all, you should listen to your audience. You should find it. You should uh, prepare some message for it and hear what they really need, what they really want. So it's uh, again, it's obvious, obvious may, maybe everywhere but sometimes in this rush we are we, we feel that we know better than our audience and, and we are coming out with some oh. statements which is very smart very sounds very good and, and, and very but it's not for them not for, for our audience yes. so yeah and I have some a story to add here um, one of the examples that I have from Telia is um, not knowing our audience not knowing our global audience. And um, we just recently had the Love is Love campaign where, and I don't know if you know Telia brand, but we have this little pebble logo which can be of the different colors. And um, the group uh, decided to make, uh, to make the pebble or uh, like a um, rainbow style and to really put it all in all the media channels about love is love and that we support equality and uh, and uh, and uh, and supporting the pride, um, and this was a nice move in terms of social responsibility from the group. They wanted all the countries to do it, but uh, to be very honest with you, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania did not sign up to do it, and we had a long discussion about this because equality and pride right now are not the hot topics for us, and the audience may not be even ready for them. So as a brand, to go with such a statement for us was maybe a little bit riskier choice than to, than to be the trailblazers and to, and to speak. We assess that the business risk is bigger. 
So, so that's why um, knowing the audience is really key, even when you're working for a global business. And, uh, and, and, and knowing the audience is, um, I mean, I think it's the first thing. And that's why um, usually communications is working in different countries, in their language, working with the audience and the topics that are the key in the media landscape at the moment. Yeah, and talk about local audience, there are no any more internal audience, external audience, journalists or some other shareholders. Uh, yeah, when in the morning your employees could be work for you, then later he he's your customer, and in the deep night he's journalist writing on blogs. So, so you 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 should take that out of this and. Uh, the clear the same message. You cannot take one thing for your for your for journalists interview and for your customers. So you can specify but it could be integrated and about the same. What else? We have uh, strength in your strength. Then when you have no time uh but you know your strength. So my advice, my personal advice is walk on strength, not try to walk on your some bad side. We all know all SWAT. So take one strength and increase them. Uh, and it's related to the seventh one regard from Lithuania, then be fast and short. It's about this. It's about the fastest one five. It's about that that we are uh, we can see 10 windows on our computer at the same time, we can accept only headlines, not content. So you you should be very fast and, and, and very, very short. And uh, a few days ago, my, my son, my eight years old son was asking me, what is actually your job about? What are you doing? What, what does communication mean? And here we have our eight regards. Um, which I'm saying, tell stories and paint pictures. So I, I, I was telling to my son that I'm painting pictures with words. And yeah, I'm trying them to have attractive, colorful, uh, lovely, and I'm trying to put my message in those, in those pictures. So I believe, I believe in, in, in this, in, in visual things, I believe in symbols, I believe in examples. I believe in storytelling in communication. I guess it's everywhere, no? Mm, probably, probably. You tell us how it's different, how it's specific, or maybe maybe there is something that you notice that is common for everyone. So yeah, number nine is work with feelings, not brains. Again, uh, facts are nice, but painting pictures and stories is something that, that encourages feelings and encourages people to engage to the message, which is probably communication 101, right? You have people give facts, give something to form their opinion, and only then they will change behavior. And, and I really believe very much, as I, I was interested in, in your economy, so I believe that at the end of the day, all decisions are made uh, based on feelings, on your heart, on your emotions, not on facts. For men also, <laughs> they believe that price works the best or some number, but uh, actually I, I wrote a lot of, um, a lot of analysis and, and, and uh, science, science reports on this, that at the end of the day, we are defining um, what our heart is telling. So in communication, we should work on message, not only for brains. Even I am working in finance ministry, I'm working with many numbers. You should work not only with numbers, but mostly with emotion. And you, and the last one I like the most, enjoy. Communication is again about feelings, about joy, about happiness. And... Uh, Especially it works when you really like your job as we with me. <laughs> I guess I guess it's very common for all of you because all of the people who are part of IEBC, um, as much as I've met, uh, they are completely professionals and really taking their time and their, their work with joy. So so this counts very much and if you do something with joy you can definitely see that it stand out stands out also as a result.
because there's a lot of there's a lot of messages in every market, same as in Lithuania, and uh, the ones that are that are built with passion, they stand out. Yeah, and can I talk about my book a little bit? Yes. <laughs> I'm working with members in finance ministry, and I wrote a book which is called Kiss My Smile. It's also you. It's available on English on Amazon, but on Lithuanian it sounds better. But it's about joy. It's about how to make every woman smile. When everyone is smiling around, I believe that the world is better and nicer and more fun and all the other things. So yeah, and it's a, a little bit leveraging the um, wish for pain and blood, which is on our fifth newspaper page where you get all the crimes and everything. And I guess all of the audiences need a little bit of both, but. I hope that positive will overtake some time. Yeah, but you, need, you, you know that there are different numbers, but if you want to neutralize one negative message, you should three, four positive yes. messages. Yes. So I believe that today we, we were very positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and yeah, and Board Panda actually, that website that I'm talking about is also super positive media channel, so I really recommend you to try that. And the book, the book Kiss My Smile. Yeah. <laughs> Um, right, so I guess that's all that we have to share, and uh, I heard that there are a couple of questions, so we're happy to take questions now. Yeah, so we had one question which was on internal culture. You addressed it somewhat when you made the, um, or told the story about the Rainbow Campaign, um, but how do, you, how do you support or promote a strong internal culture when you have, or for example, with multinationals who have operations uh, in Lithuania and obviously also in other countries? Um, you speak about internal comms and the culture building in, in, inside the company. Yes, yep. Yeah. I think the most common thing is to find the common ground between the people. So basically, I saw when we did the merge, and it's not only to different countries and moving to you know, different locations and so on. It counts to even to different businesses in Lithuania when we did the merger between Teo and Omnitel, which became Telia in the end. Uh, there was some, uh, uh, I mean, there was always um, now, uh, them, them and us attitude until they got to know themselves as people, until they got to know each other as people, until they went for a coffee together or, you know, it's sometimes coming to like basic grassroots things that you have to start with, not with strategy, not with, you know, this is our values and let's put them on the posters. It's about having conversations with people and having conversations from the other side. And, uh, and uh, that's one of the reasons why we speak about Lithuania right now, is that not many people know what Lithuania is, but actually it's, it's something that when you discover, you actually find out, oh, it's actually a nice country. I had no idea that they have all those things. And uh, which is much harder for us, so to say, when you compare it with, with, with the larger countries and large markets. So I guess that counts, you know, on different scales, on countries, on companies, on different divisions of the company and all the different things. So making dialogue matter and making, um, making dialogue both ways, horizontally and vertically, I think matters the most at the very beginning. Other question. Um, you were saying about Lithuania being a small country, but also as well punching above its weight. So you have more award-winning case studies coming from Lithuania, and you're an example of that uh, via the work which you did, which was recognized by IBC for Gold Quills. Um, but also as well, you know, the, the languages that Lithuanians speak, um, Lithuania being in the center uh, in many ways of Europe and how Europe is shifting. So what role will Lithuania play and Lithuanians play in communications moving forward? Can you um, just repeat the question one more time? So we will have more time so, to think about the answer. <laughs> with, with Lithuanians, with your culture, with your language mix, with the increasing... Um, visibility of the work which Lithuanians and Lithuanian companies are producing, and you're an example of that, um, and also Lithuanians' position in Europe, Yeah. Uh, what role will Lithuania and Lithuanians play 
in communications and the function in terms of a wider European context? You might uh, yeah, add something to me, but my initial thought is that like what we have as being on the crossroads is you learn to be super empathetic, you learn to understand very different audiences and very different communications and political contexts. So I think that's what makes us a little bit a hub and that makes us, and as well it represents in our economic relations because we do economics with all of the, all of the world and uh, some of the industries that are very developed that we don't even, you know, we don't publicly talk about it. For example, gaming industry is huge in Lithuania, but nobody knows that it's from Lithuania. Like, so, so, so I guess, I guess one thing that with this being empathetic and being very results driven um, as a start, um, I think I think Lithuania can really do a lot in um, facilitating the dialogue globally over different countries and different companies and different languages as well about you know how communications can be can be moved forward as a profession which is which is actually the key to the business because it's not a supporting function anymore. It's uh, it's already uh, I mean without the good communications you cannot do business anymore and I think that's really upcoming. Uh, I agree with you and uh, what to add. I don't know, we are very cosmopolitan. We we, we are adapting very fast. Uh, we we can we are creative as I mentioned before. So yeah, all those things just mm -hmm. we are very <laughs> <laughs> clearly. Well, these are the two questions which came in. So we are almost at the hour mark. Um, so I wanted to thank uh, Raminta, Via, and your little one as well for being well behaved. And uh, please join us for the next webinar uh, at the end of August. We're going to be focusing on issues around Brexit. So thank you again, and uh, thank you very much, ladies. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. And see you at the Leadership Institute.